Eight, seven, six, five. All three engines up and burning. Two, one, zero, and liftoff. The final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time for the start of a sentimental journey into history. 24 seconds into the flight, roll program complete. Atlantis now heads down, wings level on the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Space Station. 40 seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines throttling back to 72% of rated performance in the bucket, reducing stress on the shuttle as it goes transonic for the final time. Engines now revving up, standing by for the throttle up call. Atlantis, go at throttle up, no action, DPDT. Go with throttle up, no action on DPDT. That call from Capcom Barry Wilmore, a transducer, instrumentation only, no action required. Atlantis now 15 miles in altitude, already 16 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, one minute 40 seconds into the flight. Atlantis flexing its muscles one final time. Atlantis traveling almost 2,600 miles an hour, 21 miles in altitude, 24 miles downrange, standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. The main engine steering the shuttle on a pinpoint path to its preliminary orbit. Two minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis already traveling 3,200 miles an hour, 35 miles in altitude, 50 miles downrange. The propulsion officer reports the orbital maneuvering system engines have ignited. Atlantis kicking on its afterburners for one minute, 23 seconds for the final phase of powered flight. Atlantis, two engine towel. Two engine towel. That call from Capcom. Single pane day, so the, in the event of contingency, you're in plane plus 230 on the ECAL page. No comm VIs when you're ready to copy. Okay, in plane plus 230, go ahead. Press to ATO, 10 decimal 8. Press to MECO, 14 decimal 7. Press to ATO, 10 decimal 8. Press to MECO, 14 decimal 7. That's a good read back, Atlantis. Because of the slightly late launch time, Capcom Barry Wilmore reading up to pilot Doug Hurley the updated abort boundaries for Atlantis, which is flying on the singular power of its three liquid fuel main engines, draining a half a ton of fuel per second from the shuttle's large fuel tank. Three and a half minutes into the flight, Atlantis traveling 4,200 miles an hour, 54 miles in altitude, already 120 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Three good main engines, three good auxiliary power units, three good fuel cells for Atlantis. Atlantis, negative return. Negative return. That call from Capcom Barry Wilmore indicating that we're too high in altitude, too far downrange to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. However, Atlantis's three engines performing perfectly. Four minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis currently traveling 5,500 miles an hour, 62 miles in altitude, almost 200 miles downrange. Four minutes of powered flight remaining. Atlantis speeding straight as an arrow toward its date with the International Space Station Sunday morning.
coming up on the five minute mark. Atlantis now traveling 6,500 miles an hour, 66 miles in altitude, 250 miles downrange. Atlantis, press to ATO. Press to ATO. That call indicating we can make minimal orbital targets in the event of an engine failure. All three engines continue to function normally. Atlantis will begin its slow roll to a heads up position shortly. Five and a half minutes into the flight, Atlantis traveling 7,700 miles an hour, 315 miles downrange. Atlantis, single engine, Ops 3. Single engine, Ops 3. And the guidance officer here in Mission Control confirms that the computers are commanding the main engines to swivel. Single engine Zaragoza 104. Single engine Zaragoza 104. We've rolled to a heads up position now, providing better communications to the tracking and data relay satellite system as Atlantis heads uphill. Six minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis press to Miko. That call indicates that we can make our normal orbital cutoff targets in the event of an engine failure. However, all three main engines continue to function normally. Nominal. Fergie, go the plus X, go the pitch. Nominal set down plan, go for the plus X, go for the pitch. That call indicating uh, that we will be in good shape uh, for the uh, orientation of Atlantis for external tank uh, photography following main engine cutoff. Now seven minutes into the flight. One minute, 20 seconds till main engine cutoff. Atlantis traveling 12,000 miles an hour. The main engines will uh, soon be throttling down once again to limit the stress on the shuttle and its four crew members to that of three times the effective gravity. Atlantis currently traveling at a speed of more than four miles a second. One minute of powered flight remaining for Atlantis. Three good main engines, three good auxiliary power units, three good fuel cells. Approaching the eight minute mark into the flight. Atlantis now traveling more than 15,000 miles an hour. Eight minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, standing by for main engine cutoff. That'll be followed a few seconds later by the separation of the external fuel tank. Booster officer confirms main engine cutoff. For the last time, the space shuttle's main engines have fallen silent as the shuttle slips into the final chapter of a storied 30-year adventure. Now standing by for external tank separation. Atlantis off the tank. Commander Chris Ferguson will be maneuvering Atlantis now into an orientation to enable Sandy Magnus to capture digital still imagery of the external fuel tank as it drifts away. Ohms 1 is not required. Your preliminary Ohms 2 TIG, 37 minutes. 37 minutes, uh, no ohms one required, thanks.